I just, I think the Lord was just trying to confirm what was spoken here today. Uh, I saw this in, in out of order sequence, but I believe that it's important that it's out of order because that's the way the Lord brought it forth. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it means something. But anyway, the first thing that I saw was this black funnel and it it almost it looked like a like a can uh, but it was a cylinder shaped black like type funnel that had like a anyways inside of this inside of this um, object what were um, kernels of corn that were put into this machine type. It was like a, a hand, um, it was like a machine that had uh, like a, a crank on it. Um, and sorry, I'm really distracted. There's tons of things happening on this phone that I um, am holding. So. Um, Let me try this again. There was an object that was black like a funnel, like a cylinder, and corn kernels were being poured into this machine, and it had a press in it, and it was a handheld press that um, if you twist the top, it will slowly crush the corn kernels into like a fine powder. And the very next thing that I saw was um, was a fan, a stand-up fan, and I saw corn kernels being thrown at this fan, and the corn kernels were bouncing off of the fan. And at this point, I began to talk with the Lord a little bit, and I was waiting to see when the corn kernels that had been crushed in the device would be thrown into the wind, into the fan. And the Lord didn't show me that. He wouldn't show me that until he revealed that they were going to be blown by a different kind of wind. So there was a separation of two different, things that were going on. The kernels that were thrown at the fan were never, the shape of them were never changed. They were never crushed. The, the, the consistency of it never became anything else. It just remained in its form as a kernel. And the other one was pressed completely into a powdery corn mesa or whatever that stuff's called, um, meal or whatever. But it was, it was thinner than a meal. It wasn't a corn meal. It was thinner. It was like powder. Um, and then the Lord showed me because I was like, what, where does that, does it get, I expected to see the powder being thrown into the fan because I knew it had to be blown by the wind, but the Lord did not show it to me. This is where I got hung up because it wasn't moving forward when I was like, Lord, I know it goes into the wind. Why aren't you allowing it to be blown into the wind in this vision? Um, and then the Lord showed me that it is to be blown by the wind, but a different wind. And then I saw the the powder in the hand of, of wisdom, and it was an, a woman because in the word it, it comes across as a woman, but it was a woman, and she blew the the powder off of her hand, and that um, powder immediately went up to the heavens as a sweet smelling aroma of like incense. It changed its form, sort of into incense, and it went into the heavens. And at this point, the Lord changed the vision, and he showed me what was going on before this happened. So he showed me this, the end, and then he showed me the beginning. And this is why it was important and significant that it was told out of order. I don't know that purpose, but I know that it's important. Um, I saw Jesus in the cornfield, and he had the corn. There was, I mean, there had to be miles and miles and miles of corn. And he was standing before before a uh, corn shoot, a corn the husk of it, the plant itself. Mm-hmm. And um, he had a corn in his hand, 
and he took something like a knife and he began to slice this corn on the cob into these slices. And then he had another tool. He had sort of like tongue and he, he began to sort of um, shake off the corn and it was like back and forth in a back and forth motion. And so as he's shaking the corn off of the cob, some pieces are falling into this, um, piece that was eventually will be pressing it. Some of them fell to the ground and some of them hung on to the core because when he sliced the corn, it, each slice of the corn was still connected to the core of the um, corn on the cob. And so when he had the tongs, he was holding it sort of by the core and then shaking it off. And you can see like strings that were attached to the corn. They would like have a piece hanging from it and then some would fall to the ground and some fell into the press. And the one thing that I noticed here at this point was the corn that he was dealing with and touching was a different type of corn altogether than that of the kind that was thrown into the fan. So it was a larger, thicker corn that was put into this press. Anyway, and so obviously layer by layer, the Lord grabbed these pieces with the tongs and shook them and what fell into different places. And then I asked the Lord, okay, I can see that this is a different kind of corn. Um, where does this other corn, where's this other corn produced from that was thrown into the fan? And he showed me, um, this is when I saw the, how much corn was actually here and how thick the cornfield was. He showed me, um, like a thick, lush cornfield and like off into the right side, I could see sort of away from this, there was a cornfield that was being, um, uh, Husks, I guess, but it wasn't by the hand. It wasn't by the hand of of Jesus. It was by a man made machine. So you could see the machine that man had made going through this cornfield, um, and there was it was very careless and just um, not methodical at all. Just very mind numb work of this machine, where it would just tear up the corn by the roots and just process it through this machine and toss out the pieces that didn't need to be tossed and basically destroy the corn on the cob itself and all the leaves and just out of the chute came all these like little kernels of like popcorn type of corn. That's what it looks like. And that was the difference between the two processes and the two types of corn. And this, that was the little vision. Hmm. Understanding It seemed to me to be very much. Oh, I forgot a part. I just forgot a part. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, let me let me let me see here. Um, I think the Lord showed me. I'm trying to figure out where the Lord showed me this piece. Oh, okay. Um, so when you saw the the wisdom blow the wind and it became a sweet smelling aroma um, to the Lord there was another part and it was right when Justin began to pray that I saw this, but I, I don't remember in what order towards the end of this vision. I'm sorry, but I don't remember that, but um, I, I think I asked the Lord, you know, what, where does this aroma from the fan, all the corn from the fan going to end up because you saw where the one ended up. And then I asked where it sort of what, where it ended up and it ended up in one of those um, objects in a Catholic church that the priest holds that has the incense there. So he has this item that he, they put, I believe incense or something inside of it. And he walks, the priest walks and he kind of shakes it from side to side and the incense or the smell or whatever is in that item comes out and it smells. So I believe it's like an incense of a Catholic church. Anyway, um, I, I, there's just two very distinct things going on. <laughs> um, and I don't think, and I could be wrong, so forgive me if I'm misinterpreting this, but I don't think any of it has anything to do with the world. I believe that this is all Christians in general, and there's very, very distinct differences 
I would even go as far as to say some are slaves and some are sons. But that, that's all that I think. Mm. Mm. So you think it's a slave and a song representation here, right? So, 